Hello, this is Anthony Rodamonti with Copy Controls. Today I'll be talking about how to manually edit an ESI file so that you can um, edit your PDO mapping. So an overview of what we're going to talk about. First we'll talk about the ESI file format, MDP protocol, and then we'll talk about how to properly map a PDO using an SDO initialization sequence. And then some masters, they're you know, so inept or you know, whatever, they don't give you an SDO initialization sequence, so you have to edit the ESI file manually. So I know it's hard to believe, but some masters, they don't provide the tools to edit the, um, the SDO initialization sequence, so the user has to manually edit the file. So an EtherCAT slave information <clears throat> ESI file, uh, it provides information about the slave to the master. So you have um, an object dictionary, and it contains an index for each object, the size of each object, the data type, and the description. So as we go and, and we create new objects, the ESI file, you know, we create new objects for our different features that we develop, and um, the firmware is updated each time we do that, and so, uh, so is the ESI file. So make sure that your ESI file matches your firmware version. So there are two types of ESI files. There are flats and slots. The only difference is the slots support MDP protocol. So modular device protocol, it's um, it's just a it provides the user with these convenient modules, and each module corresponds to a cyclic mode of operation that you might want to pick. So a, cyc a cyclic synchronous position CSP. Um, CSV, CST. So each each one of those modes has a module that corresponds to it. And each module has pre-selected fixed PDOs that contain the necessary objects for the desired mode. So we have um, these PDOs and uh, a process data object is a PDO. It's uh, cyclic data that's sent at a fixed rate and it's constantly sent and uh, it's very fast. An SDO object is it's acyclic data it's sent once and it's used for one-time uh, settings. So if you have here in this chart um, on the left hand side we have uh, P, uh, we have RPDOs so these are commands to the drive so the drive is receiving these so that's R stands for and T is transmit so the drive is transmitting this information back to the master. So per node there are eight uh, user mappable PDOs. You have four receive and four transmit. And then you have um, these uh, fixed PDOs. So you can only pick one fixed PDO per axis. And then you can use you know all eight of these if you wanted to. So each PDO can map up to 32 bytes. So 1600 can map 32 bytes. 1601 can map up to 32 bytes. So 32 times 8, that's how many bytes you can map. So let's move forward here. So for, uh, actually just to go back, so these are fixed, meaning that you can't edit them and so therefore the firmware knows their contents and they're handled at a higher priority and they contain very important information for those cyclic modes. These are not known to the drive, their contents, so the user can the user can change them so the user can edit these. That's uh, so that's what we'll be talking about here is how to change these and edit them in the file. So an initialization sequence and this is what you'll typically see for most masters. They have a nice um, startup process that on startup, the master can send these SDOs to, to map those user mappable PDOs. So this is what TwinCat looks like. This back off, they, they invented EtherCat. And, um, it's very uh, user-friendly IDE here. So the first thing to do is they the sync manager 2 and 3, they, they set it to 0, and then they... It just disables it. 
and then they clear all the, the mappings of the user mappable PDOs, and then they um, they load the sync managers with um, with some fixed PDOs for the cyclic modes, and then they set it to two, meaning that there are two objects in there. And then, uh, so there's a 40 offset because this is a two axis drive. So per axis, you increment by 40. And the same thing here, this is a, uh, this is a TPDO, a fixed TPDO. So there's for uh, both axes. And then there are some settings here that it's just setting the mode of operation for each axis to uh, eight, which is CSP mode. So for axis A, it's six, uh, 60 60 for the mode of operation for axis B you add 800 and hex to it and um, that's that so now if uh, so to compare here's what a trio and another ethercat master has um, so looks very similar to twincat startup tab you have a STO initialization command list for each node, so I had a three-axis controller here, and this long list of of a startup uh, on startup, it'll send these SDOs to map the PDOs. So you can edit the PDO mapping, and that's what you see here. And then right when you get to here, we're setting the you know looks familiar to TwinCat where you're setting the mode of operation, and then it's doing some other things: the interpolation time period and the sync manager settings. So if the master does not have initialization sequence, so it's a very cheap controller and it just you know doesn't have that functionality, then the, the PDO mapping can be uh, manually changed in the in the file. So we use the entry property of the non-fixed PDOs. So there are eight non-fixed PDOs, um, four R PDOs and four T PDOs and each one can map up to 32 bytes of data. So uh, here we're going to create an entry into this TPDO1 and we're just going to map the general purpose inputs. So some common data types um, that we map are uh, you know, signed byte and unsigned byte. So use this table when you're creating your entries. And then um, here's TwinCat's startup after editing the ESI file. So I went in, I edited the ESI file to that, I edited that uh, PDO, and TwinCat automatically saw that, saw that and automatically added these SDOs to the startup sequence. So I didn't even have to edit these, I, I didn't have to add these, it just uh, added them for me from reading the ESI file. And uh, yeah, so now we can see that this is three, the SM3, meaning that now we have three objects instead of just two mapped inside of the um, inside of the TPDOs. So yeah, there's the live uh, input status right here in the uh, online tab in the process data. So that was it. I uh, hope this was helpful. That's how you would edit an uh, ESI file manually.